Welcome into Atlanta Falcons today. I am Tom Downey. Here's what's on tap for you in today's show. There are some Falcons news and rumors around some roster moves we're going to lead off with and some good news for Chris Lindstrom. And then we'll break down more in depth 10 potential draft targets to watch for. Think of it as the appetizer course where will be plenty of 2023 NFL draft coverage right here on Falcons today. So make sure you guys are subscribed. First, congratulations to Chris Lindstrom, the Falcons offensive guard, who has been named the Falcons nominee for Walter Player Man of the Year. Lindstrom has had a very nice impact off the field, and that's significant there for Lindstrom. So congrats to him. We'll see if he ends up winning that award. We'll keep you guys updated on all the latest around the Falcons, the good, the bad, the draft, the free agency, etc. So make sure you guys are subscribed. Free videos every single day right here on Falcons Today. It's also nice for Lindstrom to be having one of his best years ever on the field. Frankly, I think his best year ever on the field, full stop. High PFF grades this year. I know it's PFF, but it's offensive linemen. No one really tracks that stuff easily so 93.8 is a fantastic grade for Lindstrom so far also I will make note is that the Falcons have lost a practice squad member John Reed the cornerback who well, was a Texan and then a Seahawk and then now finds his way to Atlanta bouncing around over the past couple months really has now joined the Titans he was claimed from their practice squad he joins Tennessee as they look for some more uh, secondary depth from that standpoint so John Reed is now out of here Let's hit the draft targets then here. We'll spend a lot of time on this, more so in the offseason, but a nice little appetizer here. Number one, defensive tackle, Brian Brzee. And these rankings will change heavily. It's kind of a hybrid of like, how likely are you to get them and the impact they would provide, how good they are. It's not really a big board. It's kind of a good list of names to keep an eye, an eye on. Brian Brzee, the defensive tackle from Clemson, is number one. And Miles Murphy, the edge from Clemson, is number two. So we'll group these two guys together. Uh, it's funny, Clemson's got a lot of good defensive players, but their offense was bad, and that's why they didn't make it to the CFP, and DJ Uyunglele should have, been, should have been benched a month ago, but I digress. Uh, the production has been better out of Miles Murphy, 40 tackles, 6.5 sacks, 11 TFLs, lots of pressures too. Brian Brzee's numbers, unfortunately, once again, were down down this year he was not as impactful as he showed some flashes early on this year but he only played in nine games he only had 13 tackles a couple pass breakups mixed in there he's kind of more of the traitsy prospect and Murphy's a bit more of the production standpoint but both players they're gonna wow at the combine and teams love drafting traits athletic based prospects you could give another Clemson player to pair with Grady Jarrett if you want. Jarrett has been a very good, reliable piece for years now up front, despite the Falcons being not that great, unfortunately, this year. Grady Jarrett continues to make a significant impact, but he does need the help down uh, on, on the trench play. You need more impact players either at the true defensive line piece or more of your edge pass rushers, and Brzee and Murphy offer one of each there from that standpoint. So hopefully some more help could come for the Falcons. I think defense is still an area to focus. Eight more names to come, but first, today's Falcons today is brought to you by Fetch, the free app that allows you to scan your, uh, scan your receipts and earn points that can be redeemed for gift cards to your favorite stores, restaurants, and online retailers. It's super easy to use. Use the app to snap a photo of your receipts from purchases from any store, or click the e-receipt option, and Fetch can connect to your Amazon account for, and you'll earn for points for all your shipped orders. Plus, you can connect your just a straight up email to earn points for every receipt you receive from Uber, Instacart, whatever, any purchase you make online. And those points can then be redeemed for gift cards at your favorite store and or restaurant. Fetch is on iPhone and Android. Click our link, chatsports.com slash fetch. Enter promo code chat, C-H-A-T, to si at sign up for 5,000 points when you scan your first receipt. That is the equivalent of a $5 gift card to get started. It's a free app, but the 5,000 bonus points is only for a limited time. So get started now. Chatsports.com slash fetch and enter promo code chat, C-H-A-T. The link is also in the comments and the description of today's video. That's chatsports.com slash fetch. Let's look now for some offensive line help here since, you know, more O-line help never hurts anybody, I promise you. Peter Skaronsky, and Falcons don't know where they'll be drafting, maybe not top 10, but 
probably not top 20 either. Skaronski, in, in terms of pure impact, is probably a top 10 player in this class. But the measurables are not great, kind of the, uh, the opposite of, of Razi and Murphy here. He could move inside a guard. He does not have great arm length. It's kind of the whole Rashawn Slater debate 2.0, but Skaronski's arm length is probably going to be even shorter than what uh, Rashawn Slater has. And it's been a revolving door at left guard for the Falcons. Getting a stud to plug and play for the next decade in theory, knock on wood ideally, is a great idea. I think Skaronski would actually be one of the better options uh, for the Falcons to consider along the offensive line. He's there at number three. Let's get some more edge rush help because, yeah, you drafted some players last year, Arnold Abacady, et cetera. You can still use a high-end impact piece. Two names to watch for here. Nolan Smith out of Georgia, who I know there are a lot of Falcons fans. Georgia makes sense, right? You probably know him. A name you might not know, but you should, is Tyree Wilson, the edge rusher out of Texas Tech. Both of those guys have had big impacts for their teams when healthy. Smith got hurt a little bit earlier this year. His numbers are a bit down as kind of all the Georgia players are. Jalen Carter would be great. You're not going to get Jalen Carter. Smith would be your next best Georgia option there. Tyree Wilson got hurt a little bit down the stretch this year. Had elite production last year. A ton of pressures. Great run support, too, with 61 tackles this year. Tyree Wilson might very well be the second or third, if not, well, he's not going to go before Wayne Anderson, but probably second or third edge rusher taken in this year's class. So what position do you think the Falcons need to target in the NFL draft? Let me know in the comment section. Is it offensive line, defensive line, cornerback? I know there are some Desmond Ritter out there, so maybe not quarterback. But let me know what position you want the Falcons to ideally target in the NFL draft. Number six, Joey Porter Jr. I love A.J. Terrell, though he had a little bit of a down near compared to last year, but I'm not worried about him at all. Joey Porter Jr., who, yes, is the son of Joey Porter, the former Steelers linebacker, would give a potent one-two punch alongside A.J. Terrell. Falcons will probably be in the right range for him. Uh, quick note of some other corners to keep an eye on. Christian Gonzalez, Keely Ringo from Georgia. has got a lot of draft buzz on him, too. Maybe Clark Phillips, if you're okay with more of a nickel corner. Saka Ika, next up here, the defensive tackle out of Baylor. If you want a true nose guard in the middle to pair with Grady Jarrett, this is the name to consider. He does offer you enough pass rush to make him worth considering in that top 20, 25-ish range. Yaka there, number seven. And then Drew Sanders, the Alabama to Arkansas transfer who has been getting some round one buzz. He invested recently in some inside linebackers, Troy Anderson, et cetera. Sanders can do some inside, outside linebacker stuff for you. He's got a lot of TFLs, a lot of sacks. I kind of like his fit in a 3-4 scheme where you could – Play him around as almost a chess piece. Give him some outside linebacker reps at points. Blitz him from the inside linebacker spot. I think he'd be a great fit in the Falcons' defensive scheme there. So Sanders checks in at number eight. The receiver class, meanwhile, is, is really going to be interesting. Uh, it's not nearly as good as some previous years. And the one thing, I think, if you're taking a receiver early for Atlanta, it has to be speed. Because you got bigger bodies, Drake London, Kyle Pitts. I know Pitts is, is fast as well, and I'm a big L London fan. Adding Hyatt, who can play some slot receiver as a vertical threat, can play some outside, is really intriguing. That is one of the fastest players in college football. If you watched Tennessee at all this year, you saw he was just always open. It doesn't really make any sense as to how, but Jalen Hyatt consistently got open for big plays. He would add a speed element this receiving core doesn't really have in that type of mold. All right, which side of the football do you think needs more help for the Atlanta Falcons? Type in O for the offense or D for the defense. Finally, number 10 is B. John Robinson, right back from Texas. And, you know, Cordero Patterson has battled some injuries. He's getting a little bit up there in age. We've seen flashes from guys like Tyler Algier and Caleb Huntley. For what the Falcons want to do on offense, with whether it's Desmond Ritter or their long-term quarterback, they're going to want to run the football. B. John Robinson could be a workhorse back for them. I think there's probably bigger needs, and I have a really tough time getting on board with two of your last three most premium draft picks being a tight end and a running back. I, God, maybe you want to go with the trench guy. It, it'd have to be you win some games and he's there in the late 20s for you probably, or mid-20s, but... Robinson would thrive in Atlanta. It's just, do you want to invest that amount of draft capital? 
into a running back. That's the concern. Uh, all right, of those 10 names, who is your favorite draft target from this list? I'd probably go Peter Skaronsky for myself. For Atlanta, Atlanta, it's a big need, etc. But let me know in the comment section your favorite draft target from this list. Remember, folks, you will have a lot of NFL draft coverage for you once the season officially is over and winds down for Atlanta. So if you haven't already, hit that subscribe button right now.